This video I'm going to share with you, uh, there's tips that anybody can use. Um, it's not exactly like textbook in a class, but it's going to get you going in the right direction. I hope so. Um, I've changed a few things. I've had a lot of comments and over uh, some of the things that uh, I did a video last summer and I agree with some of the people it helps to do certain things uh, a little differently um, at the time I was on my knees and I had trouble with my knees so I was in a hurry and I was wanting to crank it up and I have shown some things in the video what I've done to the welding machine to beef it up years and years ago and um, it's helped a lot I've heard of a lot of people doing certain things as well to their machine. Okay, what I want to start off with talking about first is the, re the rheostat. This one here is a remote control and it has the rheostat on it. Just like it would be on the panel of a welding machine. And what I'm trying to talk about is keeping the rheostat on high high amperage instead of like you see here moving it around instead of up in here where there are little coils that go down to the flat spot on here and it's a wider spot and when I first started into the trades they asked me to keep this on high it's down there on that flat spot where it can take more amperage and it won't possibly burn out one of them little coils up here. So I've always done it like that. That's why in one of my previous videos I talked about it, keeping it on high. So I'll keep that on high when I'm carbon arcing, even though my machine does not have this remote. It's always been a habit, I guess. So my machine is like in between an older machine and a digital but this is not a digital machine it's it works on some parts of it like that but it is controlled by gear selectors for the course settings and you can if I can get it, that's pretty, pretty tough. I'll turn it down there like that at 180 amps or maybe up to 225 and leave it on 100% or max. <laughs> it takes two hands to get it around. But always leave it up there and, and I find that area where it burns carbon art best this machine here i picked it out in 2003 they don't make these anymore i will admit um it's a good machine it had one problem with it the bearing in the armature and i don't care what you're doing with it if you're welding with a high amperage on 3 16 or 5 30 seconds it would tear up that bearing and that bearing it had been repaired twice and there was times i never did use the carbon arc all i was doing was welding with it and i couldn't get a lot of hours out of it um i get one season out of it maybe well finally i took it to a machine shop and we put a bearing in there that um it's like an axle bearing it's self-greased and it has been in there since 2011. This is 2023. Now that hour meter, if you can see it, it says 1895. And for some reason, I'm only getting, every 10 hours, it might show an hour of you that this machine has on it. It's got a Kubota three cylinder and hands down, it is the best engine I have ever had and i've got three of them and in my career i have probably used over a dozen different welding machines if not more engine driven 
And this Kubota motor to me and the Perkins motors are the, the best in the industry. And what I was talking about, the core settings, you don't want to move this setting when you're welding. It'll heat something up back there and, and turn it and it'll destroy it and you got to replace it. This stays where it stays when you're welding and when it's at low idle, you can move it. But my suggestion is to shut the motor off because you don't know whether your friend or your helper is going to hit the grinder and then it's going to go to high idle. So you got to be careful of things like that. And uh, I hope I've covered everything. Now, some places you go to work, if that contractor wants you to work with a piece of equipment the way that they're asking you to do, then that's what you do. You do what your, your employer is wanting you to do. But what I've noticed is what I'm explaining how I'm doing things that has worked best for me and this is a good machine but when I put that bearing in there it just gave it a whole nother value it's really been a good machine since then um, I think I've only put one set of brushes on it. it's probably due for another one but uh, it's been painted from red to silver I wanted it to match the rest of the truck and um, I cleaned up underneath and I've put a piece of oak on the bottom of it down here the kitty cat wants to get in the way on the bottom to help soften it up when it's bolted to the to the bed but that's what I'm talking about with the rear stat there's been some comments about uh, floating this around and and finding your sweet spot at a lower amperage and yes if you can get it to do that um, that works fine for you uh, on construction equipment or large materials but when you're working on pipe um, and there's a bad spot that has been found somewhere on thinner pipe you're going to use a grinder but on thicker pipe like three quarter inch thick you're, you're gonna possibly use this carbon arc cutter and you're just gonna take out a little bit of an area where the x-ray tells you where to be and instead of using a grinder and you're not sure how deep you are that's why you're using that carbon arc and there's less heat going into that material that you just scuff along there and cut it um, until you get until you see that spot where there is some slag and I want to show you some pictures of some bad spots in a weld that you would be looking for when you're trying to repair that weld and um, I get it what somebody says in the comments about uh, being hard on your machine but if you're using a smaller machine and trying to do work with it that you should be using a 400 amp machine or a 300 amp machine even a 200 amp machine it needs to be built for being able to use it for that process and um, it's got to have the right bearings where they're going to be useful and not fall apart and like I said I found out with this one just welding on aluminum it started doing its thing and uh, I had to get it repaired because come next spring then I needed to get back to work and I had to put a new bearing in it and took it to the machine shop where we do a lot of work with uh, tractors and um, competition tractors also and they did an awesome job and uh, it's paid for itself um, being able to do that to the uh, armature putting a, a special bearing in. but uh, I wish they still made a machine like this they make a 250 gas but I wish they made a 400 diesel that did MIG, multi-process MIG, aluminum, and um, shielded metal arc, stick rod. It'd be awesome. Maybe they will someday. What do you think, Lincoln? Quick pictures here of the next video of how to repair a bad weld and the products that are being used step by step.